the TV ads, the paper, and the radio to be able to actually track ROI is really, really hard. Where a digital company, you know, you're going to have a dashboard every month that says, hey, here's exactly what the results that we're getting from the spin that you have. So you can tell whether your money is being spent widely in certain areas of digital marketing. Welcome to the Modern Marketing Engine Podcast, hosted by Bernie Borges. This is the podcast for the modern marketer who wants to hear from their peers in the trenches and the occasional analyst or rock star influencer sharing strategies and tactics about what's working in modern marketing. Be sure to listen to the end of each episode for Bernie's summary and takeaways so you can plan your next move in your own modern marketing journey. This episode is brought to you by Conversica, the leader in intelligent virtual assistance for customer engagement. Hey, Bernie Borges here. Hey, I want to let you know that the audio on this episode is less than optimal. And you know, on an audio-only podcast, that's a big deal. So I just want to let you know, and I'm asking your indulgence. And I thank you in advance. Here we go. Hey there, welcome to episode 270 of the Modern Marketing Engine Podcast. I'm Bernie Borges, CMO of Ingresso and your host. Hey, thanks for listening. Hey, my guest on this episode is Micah Burgess. Micah is the Vice President of Sales at Conversica. Micah, welcome to the Modern Marketing Engine Podcast. Oh, thanks, Bernie. Thanks for having me on. Um, I've been looking forward to this for a couple of weeks, so I'm, I'm super excited about the opportunity. Well, you know, you are not my first rodeo with uh, <laughs> Conversica. I've had several executives from your company on the Modern Marketing Engine podcast before. Why don't you give my listener, and perhaps even the first-time listener that hasn't heard any of those previous episodes, kind of a, a quick little overview of who is Conversica before we get into it. So we are a, a leading provider in artificial intelligence. And what we do is we use what we call our conversational AI to assist businesses and technology companies and then many other companies to attract customers, grow and retain customers with our artificial intelligence. So contacting, engaging, qualifying, and really nurturing a lead through that process to get them to show some sort of intent to move forward in the buying cycles, really what we do. Fantastic. And we are a user. We are a customer. So, of course, I am very familiar with Conversica. So that was for my listener, not for me, because I know all about Conversica. So let's get into it. Mike, uh, we're here to talk about one specific industry. Actually, uh, I was thinking before we press record, if I've done this before, I don't think I've actually recorded an episode that's focused on one industry. So what I'm going to say to my listener now, Micah, before we get into it, is that even though we're talking about one specific industry, which happens to be the auto industry, I want my listener to know that everything we're going to discuss here today has potential implications across just about any industry. And so, Micah, you've got expertise and insights you're going to share on some major shifts that you're seeing within the auto industry. Why don't we begin with kind of the big picture? What are some of the trends that you're seeing in the auto industry? I've been a part of the automotive industry for about 15, 20 years. So we've really seen with technology and seeing how the automotive space in particular has adapted to technology and really how technology is playing a part in, in not only the dealership being successful, but really kind of changing the way that the dealers think about doing business. One of the topics that we've been talking about lately, whether it be marketing companies or, or inside internally really, is just the shift in how the automotive space is really going from the car business. What we like to say, it's not just the car business anymore, but you're really in business now with the way data is being used inside of an automotive dealership has completely changed the landscape of the automotive space. Now data is more important than it's ever been. And we're seeing these dealerships uh, or dealer groups use data to their advantage to attract customers and, and figure out better ways to get in front of customers. So I think the data play is huge um, inside of the automotive space right now. It has been for a while, but just them figuring out what is the best way to use the data that we now have to their advantage to go out and attract customers into their dealerships. This is not something that's limited to just the U.S., right? You're seeing this in a broad way in other parts of the world, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So we've got offices in Europe over in London and down in South America. And some of the same challenges that we see or some of the things, the changes that we're seeing happen here in the U.S., we're seeing the same kind of things around the world as we're getting to know how business is being done in those other parts of the world. So, yeah, I don't think this is just something we've seen here in the States. 
I think this is something that, again, data is everywhere. Everything's in the cloud. So you can access all these things today, um, no matter where you're at in the world. So we're getting a, a much broader view of what we can do and how we can use this data, no matter where you're at. With data playing such a key role in how the automotive industry is really conducting business, then what are you seeing in sort of their mindset shift in terms of how they're actually running their businesses? One of the things that we're seeing now is, and I think this kind of falls in, in line with the theme of you're not in the car business anymore, you're, you're in business nowadays, is we're seeing the automotive industry now reaching out and attracting talent outside of the automotive business and bringing them into our space in auto and really trying to learn some of the tactics and the way that some of your traditional, whether it be Fortune 500 companies or just uh, mid-market and SMB businesses are, are running and implementing some of those best practices in the automotive space to be able to leverage the data that they have, the way they're doing it, in, whether it be in technology companies or just maybe some of your bigger corporate companies in America. You mentioned that they're kind of operating sort of like a Fortune 500 mindset. Does that mean that they're implementing all kinds of procedures and processes and strategies and tactics that maybe you didn't see in years past in the auto industry because dealers were very sort of regionalized and maybe a little bit of mom and pop and now it's becoming a little bit more big business-like? Yeah, we're definitely seeing that. Whether it be from the way that they're managing their HR departments, from the marketing side, all the way down to what they're putting in place from marketing efforts on the fixed operations side, which is the back end of the house, your parts department, your service departments, your body shops. They're really kind of taking on the approach of whether it be using data or technology to help them grow their business across the whole dealership front to back or servicing the customer from the time they buy a car and then the life of the customer after that, keeping them engaged and doing service with them or whatever it may be. So that's been a big change and, and we're seeing a ton of that. Micah, this is the Modern Marketing Engine podcast. So uh, we've talked kind of big picture now. Let's dive down into some marketing topics here. What are you seeing in the way of trends on how the auto industry is really engaging the prospective customer? Before you respond to that, Micah, I want to state the obvious, which again, to my listener, this can apply to just about any industry. And that is that the competition for the consumer's mindset, right? We're all consumers. Most of us own or lease a vehicle right? You and I each have a vehicle, right? So we went through our buying process. They went through their selling process. What are you seeing as the trends in the auto industry to be able to capture our mind share and eventually earn our business? Sure. Let me ask you this, Bernie, have you purchased a car recently in the last 12 to 24 months? About a year ago. I, I, I lease. I've been leasing forever. And about a year ago, I leased a vehicle. Yep. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about that process and what that looks like for you? And obviously just kind of quick, um, was there something that attracted to you or are you just going back and, and you're a repeat customer from some place you've always done business with or, or what's that look like for you? Yeah. So for me, I'm not a, a repeat, you know, I, I don't go back to the same dealer. In fact, I even like to change vehicles, brands entirely. So I went online. That's interesting. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I went online, visited some local websites on eventually the vehicle that I kind of settled on and started submitting my name, knowing full well that I would start to get contacted by salespeople. And I did. And I basically limited that contact, Micah, to text. I did everything through text. And uh, I basically was just getting the best price from each dealer that was texting me and then eventually agreed to go to a dealership with the one that had the best deal, the best offer. I love it. I think you probably fall in the category of about 90% of the buyers today. Okay. That story you just shared with me is one I've heard quite often. There's a method behind what I'm asking. So were, were you going directly to specific dealerships and going to their websites or did they capture you like you went to cars.com or car gurus or auto trader or one of those places before you actually landed on their specific website? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I don't think I went through a cars.com. I think I just did my searches and then I have an idea of who the local dealers are just from a geography sure. standpoint. And then I just kind of hit them all up, you know, those that were within a, a 30 minute drive and then really just kind of let the game start knowing that I was going to get contacted by them. Once I knew the vehicle I wanted, that's when I let the game start by just, you know, filling out their form and saying, you know, I'm only going to respond to text. And the reason I asked was I wanted a listener to be able to kind of view of what that looks like. What we're seeing is everything from a marketing perspective all points back to really today from the digital side. So mm -hmm. how are we getting in front of this customer from a digital perspective? 
whether it be from the social media side, whether it be from content creation, whether it be from directing, you know, traffic to the website, you know, with content creation, or whether it be Google AdWords and then having keywords and you going in and just searching. What we're seeing the majority of the day is the dealerships have gone away from traditional spending into the digital side. So whatever way that they can capture you from a from an online perspective, and then their objective always is to direct you into their website to where you can, can do exactly what you did, and that's fill out that lead submission form. And then from there, that's when it really gets to the point where the, you're going to start getting people to reach out to you. And I think you explained it best. Hey, I filled out a website form at several different places. I was looking to get the best deal. I'm sure you got some quotes from some people, and then you made your decision based on that. But the online presence and the inbound leads that the dealerships get today is the backbone of their business nowadays. So to make sure that they're filling that funnel, they're leaning heavily on digitally. I think social has, is playing a major part of that. I think we're seeing more of that even over the last 12 to 24 months. The dealers are investing heavily on the social side whether it be through Facebook or a lot of doing Snapchat now, uh, Instagram, and then obviously LinkedIn. They're using LinkedIn as well. So I would say social is, is climbing up there with some of your uh, competing with some of your more traditional stuff. But what's the role of conversational AI? You know, I, I shared my experience, Michael, where I was getting text. And to my knowledge, I was getting text from real people, I think. <laughs> I ended up going into the dealership and I sat down with a real human being. So what, what's the role of conversational AI with all this digital marketing from the auto industry? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to help the dealers get more efficient with that process of once the lead is submitted. And what we're seeing today is, is yes, you're going to fill out a lead submission at four different dealerships. And we talk about speed to lead. If you fill out a form at four different dealerships, the first person to get back with you and give you some of the information that you're looking with, the probability of you doing business with the first person that contacts you goes up quite a bit. So getting to you quickly, giving you the information that you're looking for is vital in that buying process. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to capture that customer. And that's when the AI really comes into place. What the dealerships have done is they brought us on their AI, their persona that we call it. Well, they will then name it. So like, you're going to get an email from somebody. What we use internally is Rachel Brooks. You're going to get an email from somebody that says, hey, this is Rachel calling. You know, we wanted to make sure we contacted you. Is this the best number to reach you? So you're going to get that initial follow-up email from the AI, all well thinking that this is a human being with that artificial intelligence starting that coordination process back and forth with you. Once that happens, you're going to have a two-way conversation. So this is where the AI slash two-way conversation really comes into play. What we will do is after that initial contact, we know, as you said it best, we're going to give you the option to now speak with the AI via text messaging. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give you the option to opt in for texting, which most folks do. And what we've seen is our engagement percentage compared to email is much higher on the text messaging side. So we're going to give you that option to engage with the dealership slash the, the AI via text messaging or email or whatever you see fit. And then that process starts from there. So we want to make sure that the messaging that we have is very polite. It's pleasant. It comes across, you know, non-threatening. It's, it's very realistic corresponding between two people is what takes place. And the customers love it. And they don't even know that they're not speaking with a human being. So we've, we've had some crazy stories. You mentioned that, well, I think I was talking to human. I went in and I sat down with somebody. But once the AI gets you what we like to say, showing intent to move forward, or your hand goes up in that buying process, we then will kick it over to a live salesperson. And then that process starts with them. So normally when you come in the store, yeah, you're going to be met with and, and greeted with with a human being. So you might have talked to the AI and just didn't know it, Bernie. Yeah, that's fascinating. I'll be back in a minute with the rest of my conversation with Micah Burgess. Conversica pioneered the category of intelligent virtual assistants for customer engagement, helping organizations attract, grow, and retain customers. First launched in 2009, Conversica's sales AI assistant has over a decade of expertise helping companies find and secure customers more quickly and efficiently by autonomously contacting, engaging, qualifying, and following up with leads through natural two-way conversations. 
Learn more at conversica.com. As we're seeing this trend just accelerate within the auto industry, what kind of trends are we seeing in, in the way that sort of their, their overall sales effectiveness? I mean, are you seeing, uh, you, you talked about speed to lead. What about speed to close? What about conversion rates? We talked earlier about how the auto industry is becoming more Fortune 500-like. There's a lot of consolidation going on and dealerships are coming together to form big, big, big dealer groups, that kind of thing. So there's, that is big company mindset. So are they beginning to see metrics that really point to a more efficient sales process? Yeah, no question. And really where that comes into play is the ability to make sure that every customer is getting touched. Dealerships have several different ways that they set up their lead capturing inside of the store. So it could be from a BDC perspective where they have a set group of individuals that take all the inbound leads in and then they start that process of following up. Or, you know, there's several different ways that the dealerships have them set up today. But at the end of the day, the most important part is that are we taking advantage of every single opportunity that comes into the dealership, whether it be from somebody walking into the store or what we're seeing mostly nowadays is, is opportunities coming in through the website and then from a digital perspective. So making sure that every opportunity is being taken advantage of and then in a timely fashion, but more importantly, we're staying on top of that lead for an extended period of time. If you kind of transition to what we talked about with these bigger groups, some of these guys are getting thousands and thousands of leads every month. And are they capable of handling that type of inquiries on a month to month basis where if you've got things in place, i.e. artificial intelligence, something set up to where you know every opportunity you have coming into play is getting uh, taken care of, then you're obviously in a much better position. So for us, we look at it and say, hey, we're going to, we ensure you that every opportunity that we get an opportunity to speak with is going to be worked to the fullest. And we're going to be putting our best foot forward to get that customer. Really, our job is to turn it into a lead, that lead into, into a, somebody coming into the showroom or, or visiting the dealership. You know, I remember when I'm sitting in a dealership and, and now it's been about a year since I last sat in a dealership. And for me, it's about every three years is when I have that experience. So I kind of study it too, Micah, because I'm thinking about the experience, the customer experience and their sales experience. You know, I still see salespeople who are, you know, making phone calls when they're not talking with a customer, they're making phone calls, following up on people. But you, you said something interesting. If a dealership's getting thousands of leads, Salespeople can't follow up on thousands of leads. It's just not humanly possible. So the technology that's being deployed, you know, as you explained here, the, the AI that's in place, that's the sales development rep following up on leads, just makes all the sense in the world. But back full circle to what we discussed a few minutes ago, you've got to have the business mindset, right? And not just the car dealership mindset, but the business mindset. I think that is such a key point. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that falls in with the technology side. I think the whole business mindset, the car business is absolutely adapting to just based on them implementing technology inside of the store to where they can then capture that data. And, OK, what, what is this technology really telling us inside of the dealership, whether we're doing it right or whether we're doing it wrong? And that's what the data is really providing to them. And I think that's the major shift from the business aspect that I think car dealers are, are doing a much better job of today than maybe in the past, for sure. So I, I like where they're going with it. I feel fortunate to be at a company where we're kind of at the tip of the spear on that. And we're, we're leading the charge on, okay, hey, you're going outside of the norm to implement technologies to ensure your success inside of the business that you run today, not the dealership that you run today. I think that's very important. If you're listening out there and you end up doing a case study by actually going through the buying process of a car and then just kind of documenting your experience through the marketing lens, I'd love to hear that, <laughs> right? Just from a digital marketing standpoint. Last question, Micah, before we get to the wrap is, what are you seeing in the way of other elements of the marketing mix in, in the auto industry? Because of the big, big, big focus we've been discussing here on digital marketing, are they spending less on radio, TV, print, direct mail, all the kind of traditional ways that auto dealers have marketed forever? I mean, is, what's the shift there? The TV ads, the paper, and the radio, 
to be able to actually track ROI is really, really hard. Where a digital company, you know, you're going to have a dashboard every month that says, hey, here's exactly what the results that we're getting from the spin that you have. So you can tell whether your money is being spent wisely in certain areas of digital marketing. Yeah, definitely so. Um, some of the traditional stuff is still relevant today. Like, I think it's regionalized a bit. I'm in the Midwest, so it may be a bit different for us, but I still think that there is a market for the television spot. There's a big market in the Midwest for the radio stuff. So if I'm a marketing leader in a dealership today and, and I'm putting together the marketing plan to present to the owners of the dealership or the group, I'm looking at all aspects. Do Am I looking at some of the traditional things? Absolutely. I still think they play a part in that. And I think the dealers are doing this. The majority of the spin that they have today from a marketing aspect is going towards the digital side. We still see specifically where I live, there are several dealer groups in our area that are heavy on the radio, that are still really pushing that. They're seeing results from that. Obviously, the pitch from digital marketing companies for the last 10 years or eight to 10 years as they've got into auto spaces, where they just didn't have that. Short of, and we joke about it, 20 years ago, the guy would walk into the dealership and he would take out of his back pocket, unfold the ad that he cut out of the paper that was an ad on one specific vehicle or whatever it was, the incentives that they were running at that time. Well, then you know when a guy does that, okay, my ad spend on, on the paper and print is definitely working. I got a guy coming in and giving me that. But to be able to track it and find out if it was really working is harder on that side than it is on the digital side. So as the dealers have become more data-driven and understanding, they want to know what their money is being spent on and, and then what ROI are they getting out of it, the digital side gives them much more visibility than they had in the past, per se. Yeah, makes sense. Terrific. Let me transition over to the summary where I do a brief recap on what we discussed, Micah, and then I'll I'll ask you to elaborate on anything, any kind of final thought you want to leave the listener, and then we'll ask you for your digital contact information and we'll bring this recording to a wrap. So we began our conversation with a brief reintroduction to Conversica. Since I've had other executives from the company on the podcast before, uh, you are a leading provider of AI technology, specifically conversational AI. Companies use it to attract and grow their customers through things like qualification, lead nurturing, and generally sales development. We talked about the auto industry. You've been in the auto industry just about 20 years, just quite a while. You've seen a lot of change and you're really seeing how they've been adapting technology to the way that they run their business. In fact, you make the point that they're shifting their mindset from quote unquote, the car business to just being in business. Data is more important than it's ever been before. And they're really focused on harnessing it ways to really uh, run their business more effectively. Everything we discussed here today, you said is not limited to the US. You said you're seeing these trends uh, with regard to how the auto industry is transforming and adapting to technology in Europe and Latin America. You also said that the auto industry is beginning to, or has begun to attract talent from outside the auto industry, again, really focusing in on being a big business and really, you know, just doing things from an operational standpoint or from a sales and marketing standpoint that are more big business-like. The big trends we discussed, of course, are that the auto industry is going very heavy on digital, all things digital, content, social media, AdWords, email, text. You mentioned that text is the highest engagement, that an AI tool like Conversica is really conversing with a prospect like myself and really allowing that dealer to accomplish the speed to lead goal. You said that oftentimes the first dealership that responds to a lead can often win the deal. So it's all about capturing the customer. So sending an email from, say, Rachel, which is really a conversational sales assistant, AI-based sales assistant, to really do that touch point. It's a two-way conversation, and you allow that person to opt in for either email or text messaging. And then you said, again, that the engagement is higher with text. In most cases, customers think they're talking to a real person. Uh, and really, it's just all about the engagement with that person to get them either in the store or even if you know the, the transaction, it can even be done online. It's all about staying in touch with the lead for not just the transaction, but really for an extended period of time. Dealers are dealing with, no pun intended there, thousands and thousands of leads that are coming in all the time. And of course, they just can't be handled at scale by people. So Technology like conversational AI really allows those leads to be handled at scale. Dealers are really focused on learning from the data, what's working, what's not working. And they're also still doing some traditional marketing. You mentioned, Micah, that they're still doing television, maybe some radio, but you said that the biggest spend is going to digital. So I'll leave my summary there. Is there anything that you would like to add? 
I think you hit the nail on the head. I, uh, you might know more about what we do than some of the folks we have internally, and, and the way you explained it was awesome. I got a couple of uh, prospects that you called. Do you mind making a couple of calls in for us? I think you'd be great explaining our product and the value that we bring to it. That was awesome, Bernie. <laughs> let's do it right, at, right after the podcast. Well, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I, I, I guess I'll close with this. I appreciate you having me on. And anytime that we get a chance to kind of spread the, uh, the awareness of what we're doing and how we're helping businesses grow on a day-to-day basis, we really appreciate the opportunity of you letting us do that. And um, I look forward to many more conversations with you, Bernie. Thank you, Michael. Well, where can people connect with you online through uh, LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever you'd like to provide? Find me on LinkedIn. It's just Micah Burgess, not many of us. And I'm on Twitter at Matter, which is M-A-D-E-R-4-4. LinkedIn is usually the best way to contact me and get a hold of me. So it's M-I-C-A-H-B-U-R-G-E-S-S, Micah Burgess, and I'm at Conversica. So I look forward to hearing from folks if they have any questions. Outstanding. Well, Michael, my listener knows that both your LinkedIn and Twitter handles will be linked up at our show notes page at vengresso.com. So, Michael, on that note, we'll call it a wrap. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Modern Marketing Engine Podcast. Hey, before you sign off, Learn how Conversica's sales AI assistant is helping companies find and secure customers by autonomously contacting, engaging, qualifying, and following up with leads through natural two-way conversations. Learn more at Conversica.com. Hey, that's a wrap for this episode of the Modern Marketing Engine Podcast. If you're not subscribed yet, I invite you to hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast player. You know, we're available on all the popular podcast listening channels. And hey, I'd love it if you would give the Modern Marketing Engine podcast a rating or review in Apple Podcasts. That really helps others to discover it. You know, we publish a show notes page for every episode with links to the resources that were mentioned during the interview. Just visit our podcast page at vengresso.com. And that's V-E-N-G-R-E-S-O. And remember, just one S in Vengresso. Hey, while you're there, sign up to get the podcast delivered to your inbox each week. And be sure to check out the Modern Selling Podcast, hosted by our CEO, Mario Martinez Jr. Hey, I hope that you'll tune in again next week for another inspiring interview to help you thrive on your modern marketing journey.